Okay, here's another proof by contradiction. So we're just trying to prove that square root of 2 is irrational. So our first statement is that it is rational. And so square root of 2 could be p over q, where p and q are integers and q is not 0. Um, we can do some algebra, square both sides. We're also going to assume that p over q has been reduced that they have nothing, uh, nothing in common. Uh, so it's like a simplified fraction. Okay, we'll clear the fraction, so we'll multiply both sides by q squared. So we have 2q squared equals p squared. Now, this has to be an even number, so p squared must be even, because if we have 2 times anything, it's going to be even. Um, and so p can be written as 2k, where k is some integer. Now, if we plug it in right here, we're going to get 2k quantity squared, 2q squared. And uh, if we square that out, we get that. And then if we divide both sides by 2, q squared is equal to 2k squared. Now this shows us that q squared is even for the same reasoning that we knew that p squared was even. Okay. And since p and q were defined as having no common factors, we know that p squared is divisible by 2, and we know that q squared is divisible by 2. And since that's a contradiction, we know that um, the square root of 2 is not rational, so this is false, which by contradiction proves the original statement that the square root of 2 is rational. Okay, and the last one, I think it's the last one. Yeah. Last one, prove that there are infinitely many prime numbers. So the contradiction that we're going to put, um, we're going to suppose that there are only a finite. So we're going to say there are a finite number of prime numbers. So like P1, P2, P3, up to Pn because there will be a final prime number. Every positive <coughs> integer greater than 1 <coughs> is either a member of the list or is divisible by a member of the list. So what that means is every single uh, positive integer can either be divided by a prime number or is a prime number. Um, and so if we let n equal p1 times p2 times p3 times dot 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 times pn plus 1. We need to uh, look at n is going to be greater than p sub k for all k equal to 1, and n is not a member of the list. So essentially what's going on here, <clears throat> we're multiplying all of the prime numbers together, and then we're adding 1, and so that makes n um, greater than every single number on the list, <clears throat> and it also means n is not on the list. Okay, and then if we divide n by any pk,
then the remainder will be one. So, <clears throat> for example, if we, <clears throat> if we divide this by P1, these would cancel, we'd still have all this multiplication, and we'd have a remainder right here. If we divide it by P2, this would cancel, we'd do P1 times P3 all the way through here, we'd still have one as a remainder. So, in other words, um, N can't be divided by um, any of the P's. So, N isn't divisible by any PK. Okay? Um, thus, the contradiction, th these are contradictions. So it's not divisible, which we set up it had to be, and also it's not on the list. So both of those are contradictions, so that means that there is not a finite number of primes, and so our original statement is proven to be true, um, and then we're done. If you need additional help, please come to Math Lab. Until then, calculator.